if you're not whole as a man, if you're not whole as a person and things get difficult, it can break you. Yeah. Right. And some people aren't prepared to be broken in order to be built up. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome back, back to the Zamats podcast, where we focus on faith, family, fitness, finances, and, and friendships. friendships. Today, I'm going to be reading from Romans chapter 6, verse 6, and it reads, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Amen. Amen. All right, family, so if you are new here, my wife and I, like to answer questions from different card games um and the reason that we do this is so you guys can get more familiar with who we are as a couple as individuals and get a glimpse into um our world so to speak okay Mm -hmm. so today we have a game called who are you and this game has four categories we got possibilities and potential connections self-awareness and fears and insecurities all right so we're going to read one card from each of these categories and we'll answer what the question says all right okay hey y'all welcome back what are three life lessons you have learned so far uh three life lessons i have learned so far number one that if you want to achieve something you have to be intentional about going about it Mm -hmm. All right, so that's number one. Number two, growth is not a result of age. Growth is a result of intention, again, with the intention. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, so that's two. Number three, if you don't make excuses, you don't have to accept them. Mm. Those are my three. What about you? Wow. Well, coming behind that, (laughs) one, I would have to say, closed mouths don't get fed. Mm. So, if you want something, sometimes it's connected to other people. You have to open your mouth and be vocal about what you want. Absolutely. Not necessarily everybody, sometimes it's just being vocal to God about it so He knows and He can make it known, you know? Um, second thing is stand firm on what you say. Don't say something and go back on it because it's only going to hinder you. Like like it just that. hinders you. Um, and three, the third lesson that I've learned, it's okay to let people go. Mm. Like certain That's people huge. are only in your life for a certain season. So. Sometimes the attachment that you have to people is very hard to let them go, Mm -hmm. especially when it's family. Just because you blood don't mean that we're supposed to be connected for life. Right. Like, we have shared some of the same DNA, but that doesn't mean that we're connected for life. Right. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. That's real Those will be the three lessons that I've learned thus far. All right, so next category is possibilities and potential. So the question reads, what are three things you have achieved of which you are most proud? Wow, there's three. Three, three. Uh, what are three things that you have achieved? That you are most proud. Um, one I will have to say becoming a mother. I will have to say that. Um, despite how much it gets on my nerves sometimes, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love it. I feel like I mastered a lot of the the core foundation of being a mom. Um, without necessarily having the example of a real mom. And then two, I would have to say becoming a wife. <laughs> because a I, I I never I didn't have that nurturing spirit all throughout my life to see how a wife is supposed to be, to see how a mother is supposed to be. It was more so I seen what was not supposed to be done, which is what shaped me into making sure that I'm the best wife, I'm the best mother that I can be, you know, with all my flaws. But those two are most definitely my biggest accomplishments. And then the third is um, healing, allowing God to heal my heart. 
Mm. Um, that was the biggest one. Like I wouldn't be able to be a mom, be a wife, be me if my heart, if God didn't heal my heart. Like That's I allowed him to heal it. So at first I was fighting it for a little bit. That's why I say it's an achievement because I had to allow him access in order to heal me because for mm. a long time I fought it. Yeah. So those would be my three. What would be yours? That's good. <clears throat> so what are the three things you have achieved of which you are most proud? Number one, I would say, <laughs> I don't want to sound like you, but so I'm not, I'm not going to say that. So becoming a father, but I'm not, but I'm not going to use that. That's a bonus one. Okay. So that's number four. So what are the three things you have achieved in which you're most proud? So number one, I would say I've achieved a mindset of growth mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm most proud of that. Right? That's, that's um, a huge accomplishment because it allows you to thrive in life and not just exist. Um, number two, I have achieved the overcoming of people pleasing. Right? I've overcame that. I could care less now. I mean, I care a little bit, but. Um, and then number three. I would say I've overcame my. Um, I've overcame my. I guess allowing my flesh to govern my mind, Mm -hmm. right? And the reason that I say that is because we went on a 37 day, I just say 40 day, we went on a 40 day plant-based journey and it was like cold turkey when we did it, right? Now, before I had never been disciplined in my eating, but that made me do it. And it, and it caused me to have like this switch turn on in my head that allowed me to believe that my 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 mind governs my body right my body doesn't govern my mind so i feel like that's a huge accomplishment yeah yeah i honestly forgot about that one that was major huge huge all right next category sweetheart fear is an insecurity love it when faced with something that scares you do you feel the fear and do it anyway or do you play it safe i feel the fear and do it anyway there's a there's a saying that says, do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. Right? So all the things that I'm afraid of doing, like I want to do. They're like on my list. Like skydiving. Yeah. Like deep sea diving. Um, going on a, like an African safari. Like all the stuff that I'm afraid of doing, I want to do it. Just, I just have to do it. I, I don't just want to do it. I have to do it. It's a must because I don't want that. I don't want that fear anymore you ever seen karate kid you know yeah. you know the karate kid when when um uh, jackie chan asked Jaden, you know like why do you want to keep fighting why do you want to keep fighting and he paused for a second he was crying and he said because i'm still scared right so that's it if you yeah. if you're still fearful of something you're still scared you attack it right you don't retreat because it's eventually going to come back gonna come back yeah <clears throat> what about you i'll what? play it safe <laughs> Plain and simple. Okay. Well, uh, it just depends on the situation. Like, if it's no, but like, let's be realistic. Like, putting yourself in situations to jump off a plane, go deep diving in the sea, go on an African safari, like all that is stuff that you put your situ. You like, you put yourself in those situations. Yeah. So I'm gonna play it safe in situations like that. Yeah, yeah. For but sure. if it comes to situations to where it's like. It's like a matter of life and death. Mm-hmm. Even if I'm scared, I'm going to like make it happen. Yeah. Like for instance, when we had a snake in the house, mm-hmm. I don't like snakes. I hate snakes. Snakes is just like should never be on this earth. I just hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. Don't do them. But it was in a house. If we were in a house and like I couldn't call maintenance for them to come get it, you and it. I'm in the house with the kids, I would have had to get that snake. Yeah. But when I'm given that option to play it safe. You're gonna play it safe. I'm paying rent. You come get this bug out yeah. your house. This ain't my house. I'm okay. renting it. But <clears> if I was putting this situation, like if I was at your mom's house and a snake in the house and I'm in there by myself with the kids, right? 
it's out of there. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to have to fight. That makes sense. Even I'm going to be scared as hell. And afterwards, yeah, I'm probably going to have to check myself in. Yeah. But in that situation, I would, I, I would, I would go for it. But in situations where I could put, like, when we went to Aquatica and that slide that she literally stand in and it's just. Oh, she was out of there. I, I had the courage to. Go stand Did on you? it, touch it. Oh yeah, to stand on it. Yes, touch it. Yeah, and yeah. to think about it. Yeah. But then I'm like, why am I really doing this? This isn't for me. She's like, no. I way. don't like it, and it's okay for me not like I don't like heights. Yeah. I just don't. It's not fun to me. Yeah. So. I understand. I understand. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's a beautiful. World. That was just an example. Like in that situation, I'm playing it safe. I don't like it. It's not fun. It's my birthday. I don't have to do this. Yeah, she don't have to do it. Right? It's a beautiful <laughs> world. You got some people that want to attack it, some people that want to play it safe. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, last one. It says connections. Okay, so this says, how do you show affection in a relationship? That's good. By touching you, by saying what you need, by taking care of you, by making mm -hmm. sure you're okay. That's literally good. just like making sure you're you're okay. Like yeah. Mentally, physically, spiritually. You look so good right now. Thank you, bro. So do you. Thank you. You took the camera off. So, so my like, granny told me to say hi. Hi, granny. And she, hey, granny. She was talking about you. She said, I see y'all on that TV. I said, on oh, that TV. Granny. I was like, yeah. She had like, we were like on live TV. <laughs> she talking about you too. She don't call it YouTube. She said, hey. She said, hey, next time y'all record, say hey. She said, hey, Granny. Hey, Granny. Hey, Granny. Love you. So, so, so it says, how do you show affection in a relationship? Oh, I'm just hands on. <laughs> just, <laughs> just all hands on deck. I'm very, I, I like to touch. Yeah, so that's how I show affection. That's not the only way, but that's the main way. Yeah. It's like, like 85%. 95. Like 98. <laughs> all right getting into the pot right. family listen i remember when i was in my let's just say in my teenage years when i was in my teenage years i used to be so concerned about doing the wrong thing or doing the right thing right i, I used to be very concerned about that which is why i took a I took a um, very hesitant approach to a lot of things that I did in life because I wasn't sure, you know, and I always wanted to be sure about anything that I did. So, you know, I want to talk about decision making and how it ultimately doesn't just affect us, but it affects the people that are around us and it affects generations to come. I don't think there's enough um, emphasis or... <laughs> There's not enough content out here about decision making. Yeah. Right. Um, and maybe there is. I just don't see it. Right. So I think decision making is extremely important because we all are in control of our lives. Right. Well, God's in control of our life, but we're in control of our decisions. And then so, you think about it all day. You're making decisions from the time you wake up. It's a decision. That's a fact. Right. All day we're making decisions. And I think that a lot of people. Um, including myself, I have been like this, um, and probably still am like this. We don't really evaluate every decision that we make and weigh the pros and cons, right? Some people um, make decisions to their own detriment on a daily basis, and and then they wonder why things turn out the way that they turn out over the course of time, right? It's you know, it's funny because just because people don't see the immediate, I guess, ramifications of their actions, they yeah. just they just assume that everything was all good. Yeah. Right. Like people say, well, you know, I eat this way, I eat that way, and it's it, like, look at me, I still look good. Like, yeah, you probably do still look good right now, right? But two, three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, you you keep eating like that, like it's gonna like. It's gonna catch up to you. Yeah. Right. So some type of way. Yeah, it's definitely gonna catch up. So I think if if there isn't a immediate um if there isn't an immediate effect of the decisions being made, a lot of people think that 
it's not that big a deal. Yeah. And I've been guilty of this as well, right? Just like if I don't see it, then it's, uh, essentially it doesn't exist. Yeah. Right. But what I learned is like it affects you, but it don't affect me. Yeah. Because I'm not feeling what you feel. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like it happened, but I don't really see it. I don't really see, you know, it's almost like it didn't happen. Right. But what I learned is like re- re- real reality is is invisibility. Right. Reality is is not the stuff that we see. Reality is the stuff that we can't see. OK. The stuff that we see is a manifestation of reality. Mm-hmm. So everything happens in the invisible world first and then it's manifested in the physical world. All right. He said, where'd you get that from? Well, it's in the Bible. Right. It's in there somewhere. OK, so, so that being said, I wanted to ask you a question, sweetheart, because I think this is something that's been on my heart. Mm-hmm. Right. And I didn't I didn't say it until until just now. now. Yeah, until <laughs> just now, because it just popped up on my heart again. Um, why do you think people are so selfish in their decision making? Mm-hmm. Why do you think they don't really consider others or consider how it can negatively affect them down the road. Like uh, affect others down the road? No, yeah, affect, affect others or affect themselves down the road. Um, honestly, I think it's because of lack of not having. Okay. Like if you think about it, all of us are like scratching and trying to make sure that we don't go back from either where we came or what we once didn't have. Mm-hmm. So it's a constant game of, Oh, I got to make sure I got this, got to make sure I got that, got to make sure I do this, got to make sure I do that. So when it comes to making major decisions, mm-hmm. I feel like people think more about themselves mm-hmm. than others. Yeah. And just for like parenthood, I feel like in a position as, of a parent, you can't just think about yourself mm-hmm. or you can't just think about, oh, well, I don't want to go back to doing this because now you have kids in the, yeah. in the mix of it, you yeah. know? So like, for us, if, you know, Noel is exceeding in gymnastics and then we just up and decide to uproot that, mm-hmm. that's going to affect her. Absolutely. You know, that's a selfish decision because, honestly, if we're making the decision to better our family, mm-hmm. that's not going to be something that's put on the table. Yeah. But because we are parents and because we are invested in that, and that's something that we have to consider whenever, you know, we're making decisions like that. Absolutely. So that's just to give like a an example for people to kind of get that visual aid of when you're making decisions and other people are connected and tied to you. Yeah. Even if you're not a parent, like you're just a person that has connections with other people. Yes, you have to always put yourself first and you have to think about you, but you also have to think about the decisions that you make and how they can affect not only you, but the people that are surrounded by you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's extremely important um, to know because yeah. you know, they're, believe it or not, there are people that believe that the decisions that they make don't affect other people. Don't affect other people. They think it's just, hey, like it's my life. As they say, it's my life. Yeah. Yeah, it is your life, but other people are affected by your life. Right. You got to understand that literally it's all connected. Everything is connected. So from the time that you wake up, the decision that you make from the time that you wake up, to the time that you go to sleep, all of those decisions that you make throughout your day are affecting other people, whether it's the people in your household, whether it's your neighbors, whether it's your coworkers, you know, your friends, people on social media, everybody's being affected by the decisions that you make. And you're either helping people or you're harming people, mm-hmm. right? It's, I mean, it's one of two paths. You're helping or you're harming, right? You're going down a path of righteousness or a path of destruction, right, in your decision making. You know, and I don't think a lot of people put much weight on the decisions that they make, whether they be major or minor. If they're major decisions, maybe they think, okay, like I should take time, I should think about this. Yeah, you know, if they're major decisions, but not even all the time in that case. Yeah, right. Are they are they really taking time to think about how other people? Yeah, how other people are being affected by this. But the minor decisions, I know very few people consider others when it comes to minor decisions. Yeah, and one thing that I try to do my best with is making sure that I'm considering others when I make decisions, you know, yeah. and not just with like my actions, but also with the things that I say. All right, I try to guard the things that I say um, heavily, right? Mm-hmm. And and sometimes people may 
think like I'm delusional because I'm like super optimistic, but it's not, it's, it's, it's not just about me, right? I understand it's not just about me. So when I talk and when I say certain things, there are other people that might be looking at me like as a, as a leader, right? They're looking at me as a leader and they're like, oh, well, John thinks this way. If John is talking like this and it, you know, it's okay. If I'm, if I'm talking negative, if I'm saying something isn't going to work, if I'm, you know, tearing somebody else down, then it gives somebody else the right to do that. You know what I mean? If they're looking at me as a, as an example, and I don't want to, like, I don't want to affect people in a negative manner. I want to affect everybody in a positive manner. So that's why I'm very careful about the things that I do, the things that I say. And I try to live um, as righteous as possible, right? Although I, you know what I mean? I I was born in the sin. Because people say, you you know, you're a born sinner. No, you're not a born sinner, okay? Because (laughs) sinner is an action word. You're not a born sinner. You're born into sin, and then you become a sinner, right? Because we in this flesh. It's just just inevitable, right? So I wanted to make that distinction because I hear that. All the time. I hear it all the time. But it's, that's not the truth. Across every pulpit. Yeah, that's not, I have not, that's not heard not one one person that is in the pulpit that have not said you born we're all sinners. born sinners. Yeah, that's not the truth. That's you. Yeah. Keep that keep that over there where you're at. That's not the correct content. That, that's that's not the truth. But um although we all sin, yeah, right, we weren't all born sinners. Okay. Um with that being said. I try to live as close as possible to um, a righteous life as I can and getting better every day, right? I'm improving every day. I tell myself that right? every day and every way I'm getting better, right? Because that's the mindset that I have to have. That's the mindset that we, that, that I think all of us should have if we want to, you know, live as we should be living mm-hmm. on this earth, as we were intended to live on this earth. Yeah, so there's a difference between choices and decisions okay choices or or making choices means like pick one all right that's that's a choice but when you make a decision that means you eliminate all other options right so once you pick one when you're making a decision then you eliminate all other options okay like this is this is it this is set in stone this is what i'm doing Mm -hmm. but a choice can be changed at any moment right so you can pick one right now and then pick another one in a few minutes right because you're you're just picking you're not deciding right? You're not definite. You haven't committed. Okay. So I guess that's the way to put it. Pick one just, I mean, choosing just means pick one, right? With no um, stern commitment, but deciding means like this, I'm committed to this, right? All other options are off the table. This is what I'm doing. Okay. So when you decide- There's no consequences when you're just picking and choosing. Right, but or the consequences decision, aren't, they aren't as, as severe. severe, yeah. When you're making a decision, it's a consequence behind that. Yeah. Like when people that are like musical artists and they sign to a contract, and you make that decision to sign that contract, there's mm-hmm. certain things in that contract that says you can't do certain things, you can't yep. say certain things, you can't partner with certain people. And when you make another decision to do those things that go against that contract, there's mm-hmm. consequences, fines, money being taken out of your pocket, yep. like possibility that you won't be signed to that contract anymore. Why? Because you made a decision, but then you try to go back on that decision, and that's not how it works. And that's just like, ooh, that's good. That's just like the covenant with God. You have to make that decision to have a covenant with God. Mm-hmm. You can't just go back on it. I think we talk about that a lot. Like, yeah. I actually was talking to you know somebody about this recently, like when people you know, are recently out of a marriage and mm-hmm. they feel like, you know, oh, I'm separated from them. We're not together no more. Well, then you don't truly understand the real meaning of marriage. Mm-hmm. Marriage is a covenant between you, that person, and God. Yeah. So when you break that covenant, you break that covenant with man. Mm-hmm. You break that covenant with that person. That covenant is still in standing with God. That's mm-hmm. why it's very important to be careful with who you marry and just don't be making those decisions to just marry somebody out of, oh, I don't want to be alone or because we got a kid together. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have an answer to God for that. Yep. That's a covenant. That's the highest form of a promise. Like, yeah. there is no breaking that. There is no getting out of that. So when you make that, whatever decisions that you're making, it's just like a covenant. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, 
you can't just make it and and think that you can just break it at any point. It's serious business. It's serious business. So what I think you, I got a question for you too. Oh, okay. What's the question? What is the hardest decision that you that you've ever had to make? Hardest decision? Yeah. The hardest decision I've ever had to make was. Um, deciding to be different or to be myself. Mm. Yeah, that's difficult because it's so easy to be like everybody else. Yeah, it's easier to be like everybody else. Yeah, it is. So deciding to be myself was probably the hardest decision I ever had to make. It really wasn't that hard. Okay. It's just it was the hardest decision I ever had. And then I have a follow-up question. What's the follow-up question? What decision have you made that you went back on what decision have i made like you don't have to go in details about it but like what decision have i made from not making the right decision you know what i'm saying like, like what decision do i regret yeah what decision like or is there a decision that you regret <clears throat> to be honest that's the correct question yeah to be honest no there isn't a decision that i regret um because i believe that everything happens for a reason yeah so, no, there's not a decision that I regret. Although there have been decisions that I've made that I, I regret. <laughs> yeah, that I wasn't necessarily that I wasn't necessarily prepared for all that came with it. Oh. Like making the decision to have our first child when we had our first child. And it wasn't like it was it was kind of it was kind of planned, but kind of not, not really. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I mean, she didn't know about the plan, but <laughs> but it was kind of planned, and at the same time, kind of like, oh damn, like you know, that what really I mean? happens so, when I don't do it, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, it's real. So so that's a decision that I wasn't fully prepared for all that came with it in terms of like the emotional change. Mm -hmm. or the the psychological changes that took place um i know it was going to be a change in lifestyle you know what i mean it was going to be some sacrifices but i didn't know like psychologically and mentally there were going to have to be some shifts and some changes that are the most difficult changes to make no right all the changes yeah all the changes that you have made mentally. have to make mentally um and psychologically as an individual um is the hardest changes that you'll have to make so that decision, um, I don't regret it, but but I wasn't fully prepared for all that came with it. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like because it was, it's not talked about, like I I do want to make a segment or just an episode dedicated to that in general from like the man's perspective because pregnancy is a lot, it's a whole yeah. lot, and everyone sells the fairy tale of oh you're pregnant can you picture right. you can eat whatever you want the cat <laughs> gets you know stay in there don't have to come out pick up what i'm putting down you know everyone talks about up. that everyone talks about oh you know new baby you get to dress it up get to take care of it but no one talks about the emotional roller coaster, roller coaster yeah. that the woman is on which causes the dad to be on that exact same emotional roller coaster. Yeah. And if you're not man enough to recognize it and grow from it and to adapt to those emotions, because it's not that the woman just wants to be like that. It's literally when I tell y'all, sometimes I will wake up so happy. And then sometimes I would just wake up exhausted. Yeah. And from being exhausted would just bring on a whole nother list of just, irritations mm -hmm. and the fact that he couldn't carry the child i got irritated with him for not just knowing like just not knowing just not having the knowledge of it not being able to feel what i'm feeling because it's like to him it's like not saying that well you did say that a couple times and you, you learned very quickly <laughs> to him it's just like oh you're just being dramatic but you were made for this just because you're made for something doesn't mean that it's it's easy. You don't feel what's going on. Doesn't yeah. doesn't mean that you're not feeling that baby. Like doesn't mean that your body isn't feeling what you're going through. So like 
not only are you going through it physically being pregnant, but you're also going through it mentally yeah. and emotionally. And that's the biggest part that's not really talked about. So yeah. I think that was that was probably the most challenging time in our relationship. Yeah. Was and we're gonna have plenty more challenging times. I look forward to it actually. But that like uh, the six and a half years we've been together, that was the most challenging time in our relationship because it forced me to grow as a man and it forced her to grow as a woman. Mm -hmm. And we had to do that together, right? Or we decided to do that together, I should say. We didn't have to, but we decided to do it together. And it was difficult because when you are, um, when you're trying to work through something with another person, uh, or, or I guess work through your own issues, or own obstacles, but you have somebody else that you that is relying on you or that you're relying on, yeah. Um, emotionally and physically, you know, it, it can it can add on pressure, right? So I think that was a very challenging time in our relationship, and the fact that I I can understand why the I can understand why there are a lot of men that. Just say it because you're trying to find the, the, the words. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I thought you were trying to like butter it up. No, I, okay. I'm trying to figure out what I want to say. Okay, sorry. If I want to say one thing or say another. So I can understand why there are a lot of men that do not stick around when times get hard. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can understand. I don't accept it. I don't think it's right, but I can understand because... If you're not whole as a man, if you're not whole as a person and things get difficult, it can break you, Yeah. right? And some people aren't prepared to be broken in order to be built up. Some people just want to be who they are, yeah. right? And and they use the excuse that this is who I am, right? They, they don't want to change. They're afraid of change, okay? But listen. If you want to get to the next level in your life, if you want to grow as a person, then you have to be broken, right? You got to, it got to be out with the old and with the new, okay? Okay. This is a great example, okay? (laughs) Listen, we said it's all connected earlier, okay? So it's all connected. Did you know that trees, before they grow up, they grow down? Yeah. Okay, so it's something called gravitropic. And phototropic. I didn't know the name. I don't know the name of yeah. it. Yeah, so it's gravitropic and phototropic. So phototropic, a phototropic growth is when a tree grows up, right? It's, it's phototropic. But but before it grows up, it has to grow down, and that's called gravitropic. Gravitropic. I think gravitropic. <laughs> okay? So before a tree grows up, it has to grow down deep into the roots, okay? And that's just a picture of anything else. Before anything evolves or or grows or turns into something great it has to go into this dark place it has to go into a place of frustration difficulty you know heartache it has to go through that in order to be you know in order to flourish in order to become a new creation okay so such is life right every Mm -hmm. everything has to go through it you know go from plants to animals to to whatever it is that you want to look at in life you have to be broken in order to get to that next level. So just going back to what we were saying, that time in our relationship, I was broken emotionally because there were some things that that I was that I that I cling to emotionally as a man. Yeah. And I had to let go of those things. I had to let go of my own selfish ambition. I had to let go of, you know, my ego and my pride. I had to let go of, you know, thinking that that um I don't know. I guess I could probably still, yeah, I'm probably still like this, but, but my way is the best way. Yeah. I still think like that yeah. for the most part. Um, I just, I feel very secure in my decisions. So, so that's what it is. I'm a leader. Okay. So anyway, but I had yes. to let, I had to let go of a lot of those things and it was a process. Yeah. And then, and then she was going through it emotionally. Right. <clears throat> and <laughs> When a woman goes through it emotionally, everybody feels it. Yeah. Everybody in the house feels it. 
Okay, so I felt it the hardest. Real bad. The most. Yeah, the most. Um you know what I mean, but I'm I'm here. I'm still here. So why you stay? What you mean? I made that decision. We talking about decisions, right? So I made yeah, that, that decision. I mean, yeah. Oh, oh, because I mean, the decision was made. Like I didn't. It was. There's nothing that's gonna deter me from, from a decision like this. Like this is like I told you, you were my wife from the beginning. Although we weren't married, yeah. Like I knew that we were gonna be together forever. So there wasn't like something like that wasn't about to be like oh like I'm out. Yeah. Like I, like no, it's just a challenging time. Like, the only way, like, I can't even say the only way. Like, it's not happening. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's a covenant. So, I don't. No, go back on I'm it. not about to fold. Yeah, I'm not about you to fold. You can't, like, when it gets hard, and I feel like that's, uh, like, the biggest thing that is, like, praised now. When the going, is get, when the going gets hard, just bounce. That's the new saying. Yeah. Like, anything that makes you uncomfortable. Anything that makes you just, just, you don't want to deal with it, bounce. Bounce. Yeah, like, you got to be out. I feel like a lot of times, like, especially, like, when people are having babies, like, y'all don't understand the depth of what it means to have a child. Like, mm. it is so, that, <laughs> having the responsibility to have to raise another human. Oh, man. What? Next level. And then you're not ha like you're having to do that by yourself or you're having to do that in a situation where you have to co parent with somebody. And yeah. sometimes it's a situation where the other parent don't want to be present. Mm -hmm. Like that's not okay. Yeah. Like, but everyone is in such a rush to have kids because they're reaching a certain age or everybody's in such a rush to just get it out of the way or just making that type of decision and just being like, oh, it's okay. My mom was a single mom, so I could do it. Yeah, no, you don't no, realize no. that you're carrying on the generational bondage that has already been put on your family, has been put on, you know, African Americans in general. You know, like out of the the statistics, black people are the worst as far as broken homes. Oh yeah, like yeah. it's and it's and I forgot to tell you that like <clears throat> customer to come in there, you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. She um, uh, mm -hmm. she she she's looking at me, and I remember I had told her I'm like, oh yeah, you know we we'll think about you know not I'm not thinking about like yeah we'll have more kids I don't know how many more but like yeah, mm -hmm. and she's like well how are you guys gonna do that? I tell you the how. same exact way we've been doing yeah, it. Yeah, I tell you how. You and want it's the a, details. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a lady that runs a a, a daycare, and she always comes in there. Every time she comes in there, I'm always on the rage. I always talk to her. She goes, oh, yeah, because you and your husband, you said you and your husband, you know, he he watches the girls, right? He he sits with the girls. I sits said, with the girls. And she's a black lady. I said, he takes care of our daughters while I'm working, and I take care of our daughters when he's working. And when we're both home, we both take care of them. That's a strange phenomenon. Though, and, there's, and she was just like, yeah, I just wouldn't recommend daycare, like, yeah, if you guys who just keep doing what you're doing, just keep doing it. Don't fuck up with daycare. Yeah. And she runs a daycare. She runs a daycare. She's she's ran a daycare she's for twenty daycare. for twenty four years and she does not recommend a daycare to another family. Because it's terrible. Listen, I don't She want... said her kids wasn't even in daycare. She said the only reason why they're around daycare is because she is in business with daycare. Right. Yeah, I, I listen, I don't even want my children in in school. Period. I don't want them in daycare. The school system. School. Yeah, like it's terrible. So the school system, you guys do your Googles, okay? The school system was originally designed, it was originally funded, still funded till this day by the Rockefeller Foundation. And the reason that they give so much charity or they give so much money to these schools is because they're the ones funding the schools, right? It's all their money is the ones that's you know funding the school system. But here's why. When it first started, the schools were intended to create workers. Mm -hmm. Okay, they sent the children to schools, and it was supposed to resemble the school, the 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 factory, right? The school resembles the factory. That's why they have the bell. They got the you know walking in a single file line. You know you're in this this a strict schedule. Yeah, strict schedule, right? On punishment if you do something wrong. Like it resembles the factory. 
Okay, so the school was originally designed to create workers, and it's still like that to this day. All the school system does is eliminate children's imagination. It dumbs them down, and it is, I think it's terrible for children, right? Like, absolutely terrible. So I don't want my children in schools. I don't want them in daycares. I want them, I want us to be the biggest influence in their lives. Yeah. Not their friends, not, not the school system, not, not none of that. I want us to be the biggest influence in their lives. And you may say, well, John, that's crazy. Oh, y'all just right? new parents. Yeah, y'all just y'all new just parents. Y'all just parents. don't know. No, we're, we're caring parents and we, we have an understanding of what we want. We right? see. The, I feel like a lot of warning comes before destruction. Yeah. We have been in contact and have come across too many people that were educators in the school system basically warning us if you can. I highly recommend mm-hmm. that you just don't. Yeah. Because the rates of suicide from kids being bullied in school, not saying that that your child being bullied is going to go away just because they're not in school, because it even happens that children are homeschooled. They have social media. There's so many different ways mm-hmm. to encounter that. However, the school system sets that up to where, on such a degree to where there's nothing in place to protect uh, children that are being bullied a lot or children that are different like right. there are certain people there are people in this world that are you know their destiny and their purpose on this earth is to work a nine to five yeah and there are certain people that are different in a way to where their mind isn't on that level mm-hmm. and just the way that we are and just us nor our children i don't see our children following that path and even if right. they do I want it to be a decision that they make, not a decision that is drilled in their head that you have to work for somebody, that you have to do this. Oh, you're not going to be successful if you don't graduate high school and if you don't graduate college and get a degree and make sure you get the highest degree because if you just get a bare minimal degree, then you're not going to be successful. So you got to get the highest degree. Then you got to go work for somebody else. You got to be the best version of yourself for somebody else. Mm -mm. Yeah, that system is flawed. And that dog doesn't hunt. Listen. That very few people that have degrees even work in their field. Not only that, Dope. very few people that have degrees even use the degree, period. Right? There's people with degrees that are working at high-end restaurants. People with degrees is working at retail retail yeah. stores. It's a right? lady that literally, sorry, it's a lady that literally just told me she, I asked her, she was like, I wonder how much you guys make because it's like, you guys don't have a whole lot of people here. So I'm telling her, I'm like, oh, Starkers make this, a right. and work this, and her mouth was dry. She said, you make how much? I'm like, I'm not telling you the exact amount that I make, right. but starting off, ASOs make this to this. Right. She says, I have a, I have two business degrees. I work across the street right there. She said, I don't make half of what you make. Crazy. Those degrees don't But you're nothing. in debt. Yeah. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, you see, like, just something like me, I, I always, like, a lot of people that I talk to, like, friends and stuff like that that work. You know, they go to school. I, you know, I don't knock it or anything like that, but I'm like, you're in debt. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, you get you get the bragging rights to say, uh, you know, I'm a business coordinator or I'm this for a firm or, yeah. I'm, you know, whatever it is that you do, you get that bragging right, but you're also in debt. Yeah. And here it is. I work at grocery where I did have to have a degree and I make three times more than you. Right. How is that system correct? Right. All right, family. Well, this wraps up this episode. Listen, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that YouTube stuff. Turn on your post notifications so that you can be notified post every single time that we post every, every Monday, Monday. Every Monday, prompt. All right. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And uh, love for your heart.